So in this video, I would like to explore the concept of an AND circuit, okay, sometimes referred to as AND logic, and the different places that it can be used in our industrial settings. Now, most of us are introduced to AND logic in a digital fundamentals course, which unfortunately nowadays, I see it's not getting kind of the same respect or importance that it should require. In digital fundamentals, we learn the basics of how all systems run and work. Okay, and I'm a huge fan. When I'm teaching PLCs or fluid power or motor controls, I will refer back to the different logic chips and gates that we use because it helps us to explore how a machine should work and how it help us to predict how machines should work. So in a, the series of videos that I'm going to create coming up here, I want to explore some of the diff, the very basics of logics and how they are affected in different technologies. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So here is a very basic logic gate right here. Okay, so um, this is an AND circuit. So if here I have a zero and a one, meaning high or a low, okay, on and off, zero or plus five, Okay, so if I activate this switch, I have five volts coming to this AND gate. And then if I click this one, I have five volts coming to here. Now we have circuits coming to this input and this input, typically referred to as A or B. Okay, A, B. Okay, so in this case, it would be A and B. And I would get a one here, and it's hard to see, but this little, uh, this little light came on, right? Th this, that, uh, this changed color. Okay, so now let's take that and let's move that into different circuits. Now, this is a more uh, generalized GIC style of AND gate. And again, it'll work exactly the same. You get a one and the LED activates, okay, when both are true. Now, this can be brought over. We're going to first take this over to fluid power, okay? Now, we have a basic pneumatic circuit here. And what we have is our power coming in to two push buttons, very similar to the switches that we have here on the AND gate. And what happens is if I activate this and this, it will allow to go through this and valve. Now, there's a couple other ways to do this in fluid power. We're using it in pneumatics. We could hook these in series, which we'll explore in a different video. But for now, I can activate this. I have a high here, okay, which would be the same thing as a one over here. This one just happens to be set at 145 PSI. I activate this one. I also get a high here. Now, this shuttle valve is now balanced, and so I get a one here, which is exactly what I got here. Now, the difference here is, is that this one activates a control valve, in this case, a directional control valve, which shifts a spool, which will extend a cylinder, all right? Now, if I want to retract the cylinder in this case, I just need to turn one of these off. What happens is the AND function goes away, and then uh, we get a zero here, just as if I were to deactivate one of these, and this go back to a logical zero here. And then in this case, a spring will push this over and retract the cylinder. Now let's explore this on a motor control circuit because we essentially have an identical circuit. So this circuit here, this pneumatic circuit, is identical to this uh, motor control circuit. So if I activate this button, nothing happens. If I activate this button, this solenoid activates. Now this solenoid and the solenoid over on our power circuit right here, they're the same thing. In real life, these are physically the same thing. This is the control circuit. This is the power circuit. And so when I activated A and B, the cylinder extended. If I turn one off, just like when I did over here, or when I deactivated this one, this will de-energize, retracting this cylinder. Now look at this. We have four different AND circuits, and they all function the same way, off the same logic, A and B. Okay? Have to be true to activate your output. But the outputs for our digital circuits are what we typically refer to as Y. Um, on this circuit, the output is pressure going to a pilot controlled directional control valve to extend a cylinder. Over here, we're activating a solenoid, not an air piloted control. All right, so here we're using electricity to activate this. Here we're using air. Okay, but again, the function of it is the same. Okay, a lot of older systems 
use pneumatic controls and they're still out there okay not nearly as prevalent as they used to be but they are still out there electrical controls like this where you have this and this have to be activated to extend a cylinder these are all typically sometimes required by osha and so you know it's very very common to see out there you can do the same thing with a plc okay the logic would be exactly the same all right it would just be done in a plc format in the plc and i have other videos on that uh, that i'll actually link to the bottom of how to put an and circuit in that would just be these circuits right here essentially marrying together okay and so this is a little bit about how and logic from digital gets translated over to to the um, pneumatics and the motor controls and if i were to write up a truth table which you find in digital logic in digital fundamentals the truth table for this circuit and this circuit they would all be the same it's just a and b a okay and b a and b okay and so this is how we take what we learn in digital which a lot of students always say when am i ever going to use this stuff all right this is where we use that stuff all right so i hope this video helps there'll be more of these to come uh so i'm going to do one on or circuits on combination circuits and we're going to try to expand this knowledge on how we take digital fundamentals and why it's so so very important into the industrial world all right so thanks for watching and if you like the video please hit like and subscribe